So another activity that you can perform uh, in, in the system of regional leadership is you can create and manage vehicle records. This is an optional activity. Um, a duty officer can assign one or more Red Cross vehicles to an event response in rcv.dispatch, and so that would be your primary reason for wanting to uh, maintain the, the vehicle information in there. And then when an, a vehicle is assigned to a, a response, then it's, it's not available to other responses. So the vehicle records have to first be created in the system. Uh, creating and deleting the vehicle records requires the regional leadership permission. However, those with regional leadership or duty officer permissions can then update existing vehicle records. So the vehicle status can be in fleet, which indicates that the vehicle is available for assignment, or it could be removed from fleet, which indicates that that vehicle is currently unavailable. So, for example, it could be out for service. The assignment status can either be available for DAT, which means it's available to the DAT program, or not available for DAT. So any of three conditions can prevent a vehicle with a record in RCV.dispatch from being available. So the vehicle might be assigned to another event, and that's, that event has a status other than off-scene or canceled. So once they're off-scene or canceled, that releases the, um, the vehicle. It might have a vehicle status of removed from fleet or it has an assignment status of not available for that. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and show us how to create uh, as well as manage those uh, vehicle records. And there are a couple of other um, actions that I will walk you through as well. So we're gonna go ahead and navigate ourselves back to the regional leadership dashboard. From here, I'm gonna look at my regional leadership dashboard. I'm actually gonna to need to tab over one. And here I see vehicle maintenance. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that tab. Enter a new vehicle. I click new vehicle. And here I can fill out the details for the vehicle I'd like to enter. So I can put the name of the vehicle information about it, such as the make and the model, license plate. I can update its status if I need to here. I can enter its home location, so that way we know where it's typically located. So if it's typically located at a chapter office, I can enter that information here. Once all that information is entered, you'll be able to associate it with particular division and region and the chapter that it's with. Once I've entered all that information, I would go ahead and click Save. And that vehicle record would display here. If I needed to update or delete an existing vehicle record, I also do so from this tab. In order to update or delete an existing vehicle record, we double click on the record we wish to edit or delete to open up that information. From here, I'm able to edit. If I need to delete the vehicle, I can scroll all the way down to where it says vehicle deletion, click the drop down, and where it says delete vehicle, I would select yes. Once I finish, I hit save, and then it would delete the vehicle. So that's how we can both create as well as manage vehicles in the system. So there are a couple of other tasks, uh, regional leadership tasks, that I'm going to walk you through now. First uh, involves working with other users' contact records. So with regional leadership permissions, you're allowed to work with other users' contact records in order to view their contact and emergency contact information, as well as set their notification preferences for those who are uncomfortable with doing so. In order to do that, I'm going to first access the Contacts tab. I'm going to access the Contacts tab at this larger dash dashboard up here, and then I'm going to select Directory. Then 
I'm going to search for the individual that I needed to view their contact information or that I want to update their notification preferences. So I'm going to search for them by name. Let's search. And then double click on the individual that I need to view. That's going to open up a new pop-up. So here we can see their contact information. We scroll down, we can see their cell phone, SMS, text, as well as email if one is entered. In order to view emergency contact information, I simply scroll down here at the top. And in the section where it says emergency contact information available in volunteer connection, if the person had any emergency contact information listed in volunteer connection, that information would display under here. So the next thing I'm able to do is update an individual's notification preferences. So if there's someone in my region that's uncomfortable with updating their notification preferences, again, these notification preferences would go into effect if they had an automated DAT responder or duty officer schedule. So if I had a duty officer that wanted to receive um, different notification preferences, I can come in here to set those up for them. I do that in this contact tab at the DAT notification preferred contact method section. We see here on the right, there are three different options. We have SMS text, voice, and email. Right now, all three of them are checked, but if I wanted to remove one, I simply would click it. If I wanted to add all of them, I simply recheck it, and that has it on there. So that's how we can set another user's notification preferences. One thing we do want to pay close attention to is that if we have somebody that wants to receive a voice notification, we only want that automated voice notification to go to a single phone number. So if somebody has multiple phone numbers listed, for example, if they had a home phone number, a work phone number, and a cell phone number, we would want to make sure the voice notifications only went to one of those phone numbers. To do that, I'm going to click on the Options tab. I'm going to scroll down to the Communication Field Usage section. And I'm going to need to make some updates to the phone numbers. So depend, first, I would need to determine which phone number the individual wants those voice notifications to go to. If they would like the voice notification to go to the home phone number, I'm going to leave this set to default. I would then need to override all of the other phone numbers that individual has a phone number listed for. So if there was a phone number listed for work phone, I would select override. I'm going to leave voice unchecked. I would do the same thing for cell phone. If I don't want the voice to automatically contact the cell phone number, I select override and leave these other options unchecked. Once I'm done updating, I would click OK to save. One thing that I would like to point out here, uh, over here in this normal column, there are a couple of sections that appear to be where you could update somebody's notification preferences, but it actually does not update their notification preferences. So here we see there is a preferred contact method section. This preferred contact method does nothing for the automated notifications, so there's no need to update this section. If we scroll down a little bit further, we see there's an ability to update phone preference one, phone preference two, and you can actually select an option. Again, this phone preference is not related to the automated notifications for the purposes of this system, so there's no reason to update this section. For duty officer notifications, the only section we need to update for an individual's notification preferences is the section we just reviewed, which is that notification preferred contact method. All right, I'm going to go ahead and exit out to here. And next, we're going to walk through how to create a non-volunteer connection contact record. So most RCVU.Dispatch accounts are going to be based on a member's profile in Volunteer Connection. 
So again, somebody that has their information automatically pulled over from Volunteer Connection. In some instances, you might need to create a record of a DAT or duty officer phone so that it can be added to a duty officer or DAT responder schedule. In order to add a specific phone, you must create a non-volunteer record account for it. In order to do that, we're going to navigate back over to our regional leadership dashboard. And then we're going to select the smaller contact button here. From here, we can create a new non-volunteer connection account by selecting New Volunteer Connection Contact. Next, we're going to select Non-Volunteer Connection Users. Click Next. And here, we're able to enter the information. So since we're typically only going to be doing this for a designated duty officer or DAT phone, at first name, we can name it something simple, such as Wake County DO Phone. We can leave all other items blank here. Then we want to make sure that we have a phone number listed. Ensure that the voice notification is checked. If we also wanted it to receive an SMS text, we could select that as well. We click OK, and now we've saved that non-volunteer connection record and that phone could be added to a duty officer or DAT responder schedule. The final thing that I'd like to show you that you can do with regional leadership permissions is determine the different user system permissions that somebody has in your region. So in order to do this, again, we're going to stay here on the Contacts tab. And here on the right-hand side, we see this user account type for contacts in my region. So there are several different ways that I'm able to search. So I can search for people with, of a specific name. So if I want to search for a specific user, I can search for people based on the chapter they're located in. Or I could search for a specific user type. So if I wanted to search for everybody that has the regional leadership permission level in my region, I select some option. It gives me the drop down to select the position. I select it. I click apply user rules. And then it's going to load and it's going to show me all the people in my region that have that regional leadership account. Now, the question was asked earlier, um, you can't, while you can see what user account somebody has, you are not able to update somebody's permission level. In order to update somebody's permission level, either your RDO or your implementation lead is going to need to submit a request on that person's behalf, and that goes through the IT customer portal.